friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. It's been a while since I've reviewed a traditional style slip joint knife. Of course, this is a modern take on a traditional kind of slip joint, but it's a back spring slip joint knife designed by Poltergeist Works and made by Real Steel Knives. Do you remember the Luna? The Luna started off as a very similar knife. This guy comes in D2, or if you want stainless steel, Bowler N690. You can get it both ways. It's got a po pocket clip on one side only, right side only. It's got a fuller on both sides with a sheep's foot kind of style knife here. The other thing that I can tell you right now is 2.95 inches of the blade length. So it should be able to pass, you know, in most countries, in most jurisdictions. And I'm going to review it. There's also a soulless Titan, which doesn't mean anything about size difference. The Titan's the exact same size as the light. It's just that this knife is also available with titanium handle scales instead of G10. Now that I've told you almost everything about the knife, let's come to the tabletop and you can see everything about the knife. And of course, I'll give you a little bit more information as well. Stick around. Here it is. As I said, it's a back spring type of uh, slip joint knife. And that's the steel for the back spring. And the blade here's got a fuller on either side. And it's a great fuller. It's like a nail neck style fuller. It's deep with a nice crisp edge, especially close to the tip here where the fuller comes out. It's very easy to get a totally secure grip. And there's the uh, two thirds stop. You know, it's not a half stop right there, but it's a half stop, but it's at about the two thirds position and all the way out. And as you can see, if you look at this spring back here, you know, the tang of the blade pushes the spring back. So that spring wants to go back in and that's how the stop works. Same thing here, the spring is being pushed out and when you close the knife, now the spring's back in. So that's how that works. Of course, pivot screw, that's a T8. Uh, these other screws here are T6s, but they're nice flush screws. I'd prefer if they were T8, but at least this is pretty much the best kind of T6 you can get because it's a good steel and it's a nice fit. Let's just demonstrate that right now. This is a T6 driver, very little play in there, just that tiniest little bit. And uh, same thing on the uh, T8 up here. Just the slightest bit of little play in there. So very nicely done and they're deep enough that it works quite well. The pocket clip, you can remove it if you want to. You've got to take it apart partially to be able to do that because it screws from the inside into, you know, the uh, pocket clip right there. So there's not a lot of anything to get in the way. If you put your knife in your pocket. There's lots of room here. They could have actually made this space here of the pocket clip a little bit smaller, a little closer to the handle, but it's not bad. When you hold the knife, yeah, like I said, they could have made that a bit smaller, but it's not truly annoying. There's no left option for the pocket clip. On slip joints, I don't care. You know, I'm left-handed. I've learned how to use knives right-handed as well, and I've become basically ambidextrous but I don't mind slip joint knives having a pocket clip just on the uh, left side, on the right side. Works just as fine, you know, when this is in my pocket. There's no way this is opening up in my pocket. These back springs especially are so strong that it's not gonna open up and be any danger at all. So I don't really care that it's only on one side. You know, it's got a nice clean show side here. Let's talk about the blade shape. This is a Poltergeist design, like I said. We've got a full flat grind. There's the Poltergeist logo right there. It's on the main bevel, and I don't like it there, but it's nice and very small. The D2, again, it's on the main bevel. I don't like it there, but at least it's nice and small. And the real steel as well. I don't like it there, but at least it's very small. Is this a broken record or what? There's not much room anywhere else. So, you know, I'll forgive them for doing it the way they did it on this specific knife. Got that uh, drop point right here. Basically, this is a sheep's foot. This isn't an exactly straight blade. There is a little bit of a um, belly to the edge. And if I go on, you know, this straight piece of steel here, it rolls, you know. So there is a belly on this knife. It's not completely straight. Sharpness trail goes past the end of the plunge. It's a good sharpness trail, don't mind it. The thickness of the edge right here, not bad. So that's quite good. We'll talk about the grind angles and stuff of the sharpening and that later on. But the actual sharpening from the factory, yeah, it passes. It's not quite as sharp as average, 
but pretty close, so it passes. And in my cut tests, it does okay. It's a decent cutting knife. I got the D2 version, like I said, you can get the Bowler N690, so it's available both as carbon steel or stainless steel. You take your pick what you want to get. The D2 is a little bit less money, though. We'll talk about the prices in just a little while. I've talked enough about the blade right now, this handle. Kind of interesting. There's a lot of little angles on it. We've got a flat slab G10, and then there's a chamfer here, and you know, then there's a little bit of a step down right there on the spine, and it comes back. So there's a chamfer across there, chamfer here, chamfer here, big chamfer here, an extra cutout here, and that's pretty much where the middle finger goes, unless you want to, you know, hold it back here, which doesn't seem to make any sense to me. But the middle finger's got an extra little bit of a cutaway on either side. I don't know, it doesn't make any difference to me, I don't think, if it's there or not. But, you know, it's got angles all over the place. The balance point on this knife is pretty much near that spot. Let me see if I can get it to bounce on my finger. There we go. So, like I, I'd like the balance point to be a little closer up here, but it's not terrible. Here it is taken fully apart. We've got Phosphor Bronze washers in there. That's nice. Let those go. We've got the screws back here for the pocket clip. Like I said, they screw in from the inside. That's fine. These screws, you know, there is a little bit of thread locker there. I did have to use two screwdrivers to take it apart. And I'm going to show you how it moves. Let me see if I can get this back up there. I'm going to have to put some tape over this cutting edge so I don't hurt myself to put this back together again. But this back spring here, it's constantly pushing down and there's a stop pin there. When you close the knife, the stop pin goes right on to the sharpener's choil there and that's what stops the cutting edge from slamming into the back spring there. So that's why that pin exists. That pin has nothing to do with the movement of this back spring. It's just about closing the knife. The pivot pin, it's got no thread locker on it at all. I just wish they would have had, you know, some D-shaped screws back here so they wouldn't be free spinning as well. Other than that, the construction's a very typical traditional back spring, but of course, a very modern take on it. When I was taking the close-up pictures, I noticed there's a D-shaped pin there. If I hold the pin still there, it's got a range of movement. That's without moving the pin. So I thought it was free spinning, but it's not a free spinning pin. I'll let you in on a little secret on how I put that back together easily. If you've got a traditional with a stop pin, some kind of plastic wedge, I put it between, you know, there and I pushed down and I wedged the spring up because the stop pin can't move back. And then I was able to put the blade down on top of it. And uh, that's how I was able to get it to come together. Now for some of the other things that I didn't cover before and before I do the measurements, the blade alignment is very good on this knife. Doesn't even come close to rubbing even though there's not a lot of space there. And the tension for how hard you have to pull this back spring was quite good, but one way to make it a little bit less force that you need is if you use lubrication. Uh, I put some Gunny Glide in there on the washers, but I also put some on that interface where that back spring touches the uh, tang of the blade, and it made it just a little bit easier. What else did I want to say about this? Uh, the pocket clip hole, I didn't talk about that yet. Long hole back there. I do wish, you know, the hole was at the back a little bit more, but that's not bad. They did mill down just a little bit there, so it comes in a little bit. I'm not that fond of that. I'd rather have it back there. The colors that this comes in. Well, you can get it in this, you know, tan kind of color. There's a lot of them with black G10. And then, you know, the blade can either have a titanium black coating or this satin finish. And any combination of that. At Knife Center, there's one that's got white G10. But this tan G10, it colors really, really well. Now, this knife didn't have the tan G10. And um, I can't find my Luna right now. I think I sold my Luna. I kept my titanium Luna... Uh, frame lock, but my Luna slip joint knife, I think I sold it, but it had a color very, very close to this after I dyed it. Now, isn't that a beautiful blue? And this can take that beautiful blue dye. That's sapphire blue from RIT uh, synthetic dye. 
and uh, yeah, quite, quite nice indeed. Now, uh, you know, don't mind my fingerprints all over that thing. Let's go over all the sizes and dimensions. The weight of this knife, 48 grams, 1.69 ounces, so less than one and three quarter ounces. Yeah, not bad at all. The sharpness from the factory, I said it was a little worse than average. My average on my tester, I get about 140 bests. This thing got 160 bests, which is still quite sharp. And with how thin it was, like I said before, it cuts quite well, it cuts and slices well. The cutting edge length, 69.8 millimeters, 2.75 inches. Blade length, tip to the closest spot on the handle, 75.0 millimeters, 2.95 inches. The blade thickness, so the tang of the blade up here at the Ricasso, 2.12 millimeters thick, that's 0 0.0835, so a bit under a tenth of an inch. That's a very light, thin blade, no wonder the weight is so light. The blade depth, that's this measurement, it's biggest right here, 21.4 millimeters, 0.843 of an inch. The thickness behind the edge right here, measured in three places, the average thickness there is 0.44 millimeters, 17 and a half thousandths of an inch. That's great. I really, really like that. It's thick enough to be strong, but thin enough to cut really, really well. Especially for the kinds of things you're going to use this knife for, that's great. The grind angles, this side's got an average grind angle of 18.3 degrees. This side's got a grind angle average of 21 degrees. Started at 21.6 and went to 20.4 degrees here. That's 1.2 degrees of change. This side started at 17.8 degrees, went to 18.8 .8 degrees. Of course, that's one degree of change. So this is better sharpened than most knives that I review. Good for you, real steel. And the rest of the measurements here, the handle length, the measurement this way, uh, the pocket clip does not stick out any further than the rest of the G10, so it's just the G10. 79.9 millimeters, 3.85 inches. The grip area, it's sort of a rounded number, about 9 centimeters or 3.5 inches. The thickness of the handle scales, not counting the hardware, just on the G10 here. 8.9 millimeters, 0.35 of an inch, so just over a third of an inch thick. Pretty good. The handle depth, the widest point is back here in the grip, 22.4 millimeters, 0.88 of an inch, and when the knife is closed, the widest point is right here, 26.8 millimeters, 1.06 inches, and the total length of this knife, 173 millimeters, 6.81 inches. So it's definitely a small, light knife. It's a great little secondary user, a great urban EDC knife. You know, maybe some guys in the country would like to have a knife like this too. You know, I live in the countryside, well, in a small town, and I like carrying a knife like this quite often. Especially in Canada, you pull out a knife like this and nobody's thinking you've got a knife for self-defense. You know, because here in Canada, it's illegal to carry a knife for self-defense, at least self-defense against human predators or human threats, I should say. You're allowed to carry a knife, you know, for other purposes but not for self-defense against humans. And this, you know, doesn't look like a fighting knife, a self-defense knife, because it isn't. It's just a good little EDC kind of knife. I think next time I'd buy it maybe with the Bowler N690 instead, but it costs more money. What are the prices on this thing? I'm not going to go through all the prices. The lowest price D2 version that I could find, uh, White Mountain Knives has it for $39.99 U.S. Take off 10% with coupon code CCE. That's $35.99 U.S. Knife Center, though, has these on sale right now for $29.95. I believe I bought this one directly from Real Steel. RealSteelShop.com. Uh, $42.50 for this. They had a special on you know, a while back when this first came out, and I've had this knife for a, a, a while yet. Uh, by the way, if you've never shopped at realsteelshop.com, you can get a $20 discount code simply by using my referral link that's down below and signing up. And, you know, that would make it $22.50. So that would make it the lowest price. Of course, Real Steel Knives is going to charge you some shipping. Uh, they either ship from China or Germany, depending on, you know, if the item is in China or if the item's in Germany. Most of their items are in Germany that they ship from. They ship from using DHL, which is, you know, a German courier, and they ship fast. 
you order something from Germany and you're going to have it in three days, maybe less, maybe a little bit more, but three days to Canada. Slip joint like this has zero problems crossing the border into Canada. Well, I did hear one story once from one guy who had a slip joint held by CBSA. Eventually they admitted that they had made a mistake, but even then it was a bit of a mess, but still. 999 times out of a thousand, or maybe even more frequently than that, it's not going to have any issue at all coming into Canada. Because unfortunately, I couldn't find a Canadian store that has this. Of course, I didn't check every store, but I couldn't find a Canadian store that has this. No matter what country you're from, check down below and uh, you know use that referral link for Real Steel Shop if you want to. They've got lots of other knives, like the Sakara that's come out very recently and somebody's going to win, not this one, but I've got two of them. I've got another one in the box that somebody's going to win very soon. It's an access lock knife with sort of an integral style, you know, liner body. You know, it's got micarta slabs on it, but this is one piece of steel, this liner bent over. And uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. It's got really good action. And uh, it's a Think uh, K110. So it's basically Bowler's D2. And I'll do the review of this thing fairly soon. Thanks to my supporters, those of you who send money in to help my channel out every month. I do appreciate your help an awful lot. And remember, friends, always like, subscribe, share, comment, because those things really do make a big difference. And then cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.